Hi guys, this is Ranjit and in this video, let's do the unboxing and have a look at this Realme GT Master Edition. And this is different from the GT. The GT is having the Snapdragon 888. This is having the Snapdragon 778. And uh, this will be the second smartphone in India with the Snapdragon 778, if you recall. Uh, the Motorola uh, Edge 20 was the first one I had covered it a couple of days ago, just two days ago. So I'll leave the link in this one. And uh, here again at the back, it gives us the specs. And guys, uh, regarding the pricing, uh, technically this starts at 26,000. Uh, that is for the six gigabyte, uh, what do you say, uh, GB and 128 gigabytes of storage. But I checked Flipkart and there it says that the pricing starts at 28,000. That is for eight gigabytes of uh, RAM with 128 gigabytes of storage. There'll be also one more variant with 256 gigabytes of storage. That will be uh, 30,000. And as you can see, Snapdragon 738, uh, again, it's a 5G processor. And in terms of 5G bands, uh, this is decent. It has eight uh, 5G bands, so not a joke in terms of 5G. Uh, 120 Hertz Super AMOLED screen, 65 watt charging. And uh, back is supposed to be a little bit different on this one. We'll look at it. So let's open this up. And uh, as you can see, some minor paperwork, uh, no case, nothing. So I'll just keep that to the side. Uh, here is the device itself. Let's see which color did they send us. So in display fingerprint scanner on this because of my AMOLED screen. Oh, so this is this gray color. And uh, this is a nice pattern, guys. Uh, so feels rubberish rubbery feel but they say this is vegan leather uh, but i like what they have done certainly a lot lot better than day totally brandings that they used to have so this actually looks pretty cool i would say this pattern at least they're trying something new i don't know over uh, long term six months how it will look because of the dirt but as of now nice uh, if we open this okay this comes out oh so we even get a case so that's nice oh this is rubber uh, uh, case guys and again has that pattern so nice, uh, so we are getting this uh, sort of a unique case with this one. So I'll just keep that to the side. And this is that uh, 65 watt uh, charger and the charging cable. And we'll also have a SIM tool, ejector tool. That's it. I'll keep this to the side. So here is the handset. Let's just zoom in a little bit. And uh, uh, we have a secondary noise cancellation microphone here. And uh, here, I'm not very sure, guys, uh, if it's metallic, the inside uh, one, or the chase is, is plastic. I'll have to check that. Uh, here, we have the power on or button, nothing else. Uh, speaker. Uh, we also have uh, the 3.5mm headphone jack, which is becoming a rarity. So kudos, nice that they have given that. And here, we have the volume rockers and the SIM tray. Let's open up the SIM tray and have a look. So just due to nano SIM guys, no, uh, what do you say, micro SD card. Uh, front facing is supposed to be 32 megapixel on this one. And it's supposed to be a Sony uh, sensor. Uh, back camera main is 64 guys, eight ultra wide and that two megapixel rubbish uh, that uh, we get macro. Uh, so let's just power this on now guys. And it does not feel that heavy. So in terms of weight balance, they have done a good job. Let me just uh, power it on and guys, uh, let me just set it up, then we will continue. So guys, I've set up the device, actually installed some benchmarks and stuff because I wanted to know how the 778 uh, performs. So let's have a look at uh, this one. And again, I have to say uh, this back, uh, I'm liking this back uh, uh, pattern. Uh, it gives uh, actually a decent uh, grip to the device. Uh, uh, though uh, let's, we'll have to see how the battery holds for 4300 milliamp hour. Uh, though it's the 778, it's based on six nanometers. So it's pretty efficient, but let's see. And uh, I haven't uh, actually uh, removed anything, uh, just installed some, uh, what do you say, benchmark apps, for example, and to do a droid uh, geek bench and speed test uh, I've installed. I haven't removed anything. First, if we look at it, there is a bunch of bloatware that is installed. Definitely a lot of uh, stuff that is there. And I would suggest if you're buying this device, uh, again, uh, remove uh, some of these apps, which I'll show you. For example, the first uh, app that you should disable, this is the browser app. Sadly, you cannot remove it. Go to the app info and here in permissions, uh, actually deny uh, the permissions to this one and uh, what do you say that uh, location and everything no permissions 
uh, remove permissions if app is not used so again this is one irritating app that i will send you a lot of uh, no notifications so again guys uh, manage notifications also here as you can see it's by default on remove this because this will otherwise irritate the heck out of you uh, there is one more app that uh, on realme smartphones do send a lot of and as you can see a lot of uh, bloatware is uh, there uh, and you can remove a lot of stuff for example let's say this uh, solo is a nice one it's a video centric app so for example moj if you see you can uninstall some of the crap but you cannot install some of the and hey fun is one thing that i would say uninstall this is also very irritating keep sending you unnecessary notifications so again this is the cleanup that you have to do daily hunt etc so you have to uninstall a lot of uh, junk uh, and I think so that's uh, how Realme prices their devices slightly lower than competition uh, to offset the cost. But that's the thing. Okay, coming to the screen, guys, it's an AMOLED screen. You also have this always on, you have to enable. And this in-display fingerprint scanner, I don't have a problem uh, with this one. And again, uh, it's pretty fluid on left. You get the Google Pane, so that's not a problem. And uh, to give you an idea about the benchmarks, uh, uh, the performance of the 778, I ran and 2 on this one. So let's see the scores that we are getting. Uh, on this and we got a score of 5,34,000 on Antutu so and these are the uh, scores the GPU got a decent score of 1,56,000 but one thing to note guys and I like this one is that uh, while running this benchmark the temperature increased by only 0.8 degrees Celsius and that is actually really really good because I've seen uh, benchmarks when I run the same Antutu uh, uh, with the same build on some of the uh, smartphones the temperature increased by 4 to 4.5 degrees for example that reminds me of the OnePlus 9 Pro so that way I would say uh, this smartphone simply does not heat up that much when it's stressed uh, and it has that vapor cooling so that's nice so this is regarding the uh, benchmark uh, score uh, Geekbench also I ran I actually saved that score here again as you can see we got some pretty healthy score so in terms of performance i don't think so you'll have a performance and gaming performance will also be good uh coming to the screen uh, it's an amulet screen as i've told you and it's that 120 hertz that we have for on this one if you go to display by default and if you go to go to more and here you have to force it to high if you want it always on 120 by default as you can see it's on auto and uh, as of now the screen quality looks fine i would say uh but again, a lot of junk that you have to uninstall. Uh Hand, in hand feel again as i've told you i like it it's not as light as the moto h20 but again uh, i don't see a problem with this device uh, feels comfortable to hold relatively it's not that big in size the screen size is 6.43 inches and guys here are all the specs for your uh, reference so uh, screen size i would say it's not that big because generally we are seeing on other smartphones uh, screen size of 6.7 to 6.8 okay now guys uh, if we move to the speaker again uh, the bottom is again a single speaker guys um, it's not stereo i was expecting stereo on this one and if i just play this as you can see here that's it so they should have given a stereo speaker yes they have given a 3.5 mm headphone jack but no stereo speakers though the single speaker is loud as you can see pretty loud but i don't know why they skimmed uh, uh, stereo speakers on this one and even the moto h20 both smartphones with the Snapdragon 778 costing close to about 30,000 and no stereo speakers. So yeah, I don't know why that's happening. But at least this has that 3.5 mm headphone uh, jack on this one. And uh, uh, one more thing I wanted to test is uh, Wi-Fi performance because they say that it had uh, Wi-Fi 6. Uh, I am on a gigabit connection. Uh, my router is still a Wi-Fi 5 one. And actually, if we get speeds of around 550, I would say it's excellent. Let's see uh, what are the speeds uh, do we get on this one. And as you can see, really, really good. Oh my God, it touched 620. So this is one of the best that I have seen uh, with this router, guys, because this is a Wi-Fi 5 router, not a Wi-Fi 6. So Wi-Fi performance is excellent, excellent, guys. I say it's really good. Anything that gets over 560 on this router, here we got a 611. This is one of the highest, guys, scored. So in terms of Wi-Fi, again, I think so, not a problem. And looks like a decent handset, guys. Uh, now let's also quickly look at the camera. Uh, the main camera is a 64 megapixel. Then we have 8 megapixel. Ultra wide, they should have gone with the bigger one instead of 
of this regular 8 megapixel and uh, I don't know why we still have that 2 megapixel rubbish. Uh, so uh, I won't show you the interface and bore you guys. It's the same, uh, what do you say, uh, again you have to give the permission. I don't know why it requires permission for... Uh, he's, he's, I hate this. Why do I have... I, I deny... I have to give permission phone permission for the camera to work. I, I, I don't get it why uh, even OnePlus started doing this with the Nord 2. I don't like this trend. I, I have to give the phone uh, permissions. I love it. Then only the camera works. So that is something again. Here's some of the privacy stuff. Uh, so this is the camera interface guys. I won't bore you. And this is the front facing. No shutter lag. And it's actually pretty wide the front facing camera. Uh, so let me do one thing. Let me actually show you some of the samples uh, that I've taken with this one. Sample taken with the rear facing camera and this is ultra wide. We can also do 2x zoom and 5x. I wouldn't say 5x is good, but uh, these were samples taken in indoor artificial lighting. And as you can see, it did actually a decent job. Wide angle is not that great in artificial lighting and even HDR as you can see uh, is not that good. This was taken in very low lighting and this was with the night mode. Again, regular shot and night mode the night mode does make quite a bit of a difference now these were taken with the 32 megapixel front facing camera and i have to say the front facing camera performance is good and these were taken with the portrait bokeh mode so guys uh, that's it for now for the unboxing and first look at this realme gd master edition so what do you guys think about this one do let me know in the comment section uh, below what do you feel about this smartphone uh, and what are your thoughts about this one at this price range again yes there is that slight to bloat with but uh, if you compare it to the moto h20 i would say the moto h20 is at 30,000. Uh, this with the same configuration 8 gigabytes and 128 you can get for 28 but again it has some bloatware and stuff and also the screen is slightly smaller uh, i'll have to do the camera comparison between those two smartphones because the motorola technically has a better camera setup uh, specifically the rear one with 108 megapixel but anyways what do you guys feel about this realme gt master edition do let me know in the comment section below and guys if you're still not subscribed to the youtube channel hit that subscribe button this is ranji and i hope to see you in my next video take care guys